Hello everyone, as you may know from my last video, things are... happen. I'm... feeling. Otherwise, please keep comments about it to a minimum, or even not at all. Let's focus on the main topic at hand, that being EU FanFest. I wanted to talk about it and give my own thoughts even just so I can get them out of my head, even if nobody wants to hear them. Unfortunately, usually we don't get too many reveals at this one, as is normal. Yoshida isn't even wearing a shirt on day one because of his cosplay. I was expecting the melee job and nothing else. And as a note, spoilers ahead, some stuff is just spoilers with no real way to avoid it. It opens with the first extended trailer. The vocals haven't changed yet like what happened with Endwalker. Probably still finalizing the vocals is all. This being the final vocals, I'd be okay with though. It really fits with the vibe we have so far of the expansion. The music was extended in some very obvious spots, at least for someone who has seen the trailer so many times. Good going, Estinian. And the riffs during the Viper reveal were really cool. The big surprise is Viper being... well, not Corsair. Seemed like a sure fit, but turns out I was right about this part. While I wanted it to be Spellblade and the fire media gets covered in was a hint, in my first FanFest video I predicted... well, let's just copy-paste. But anyway, my first reaction was thanks to the shirt reveal. Yoshida is wearing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which Leo is in the front, wielding two swords. Seems pretty Weapon Master or such to me. Or other possible Twin Blade using jobs. And given this is a land where the Mamul Jaw are finally being showcased, and many Mamul Jaw use Twin Blades, well, makes a ton of sense to me. It seemed like a shoe in that I was wrong there, but I called it. The name is different since they seem to be trying to be more unique in that aspect, but also, apparently it's also Donatello. So we die 10 minutes into the expansion, right? We gotta follow in the footsteps of the greatest two blades on a staff character ever, Darth Maul, right? No? This is where I watched Harshavon die, Raphael. Cow a bummer. Viper's job reveal caught my eye immediately in even the basic attacks. They're nice, they're basic attacks, and there was four of them. Is this gonna be a four hit combo? We only saw two hits for the combined blades mode, so unsure if this is the same combo buttons in both modes. Or perhaps instead of four hits, it is a branching pathway, and with clever editing, they got around the skill animation nerfs for not doing combos. Who knows? Maybe even those two combined blade hits make a six hit combo. Though I'm putting my hat in for it being a four hit combo, and the combined bit is its own thing. Then at the end he goes into aura mode and uses extreme speed. Congrats everyone, we finally become a Pokemon. Now we just have to wait for Ash to come catch us and then leave us with Professor Oak, never to be seen again. Darth Maul maybe would have preferred that, I guess. Initial reactions seem to include Zidane of Final Fantasy IX. I don't agree, as much as I would love that. The Super Saiyan aura is nice, kind of like bringing back Blood of the Dragon, but for that to actually be trance, I really don't see it. As much as Kate deserves her position, having Koji back for this fanfest kind of makes me miss him more. These two guys have such chemistry that is so good for a live show like this. You can't replicate it with anyone else, even Foxclon. And anyone who watches live letters know he and Yoshida have a chemistry of their own. Something I notice is that they keep calling the planet Hydaelyn, perhaps as a nod as to what is otherwise accepted as known, or as an anti-spoiler thing. Which also, I've seen some people using the name Aetherus offhandedly, with no care for what anyone who isn't in Endwalker would know. And uh, yeah, maybe consider this to be the devs themselves calling you a bit selfish? Even they aren't using the planet's true name. Yogg-Taral just looks stunning. The lighting is beautiful, the water crisp and clear, and the music is not final, as Silken himself sends a message of. But otherwise, yeah, it sure is a town. These sure are fields. I only hope they are as fun to explore as they are to look at. People always complaining that they should give us flight to start and no, we want to explore these places. That secret image of Shaloni though, it looks like something is up in the air. You can see a tiny bit of what seems to be a floating piece of rock at the bottom of it. Did the Allegans make it here and float up another set of islands? From the ground, looks a lot like Thanalan though. Tribal quests, moblins, that are very much not goblins. I mean, again, makes sense. Vilbrand is lived in by goblins and Mamul Jaw, so another goblin tribe is about expected, if a bit boring. Level cap of 100, obviously, and new content and... Those are very technological dungeons. Oh god, Alec did float another set of islands into Rawl. These guys just couldn't stop. 
How many more Dalamoods are there? Though I guess this could be different to the Alligans, but... Alligans. Though there's some weird joking about whether or not these are dungeons. Could just be because of the design, and with the first picture being a river auto-scroller. But it could mean even more. That cave screenshot really does look great though. The visual upgrades made really are putting in work. Is that prominence? No, Eliminator. Mm, I don't know. As much as I don't like Final Fantasy X, that looks like prominence to me. We shall see though. There's some snazzy new outfits as always. Some cool new job outfits. New lifestyle content, probably the real thing I want to know. As an Island Sanctuary defender, you are all missing out. But unfortunately, the dev team was not ready to show it. I know that's just the nature of development. Man, I want to see. Show me the fun. Though it being party-based content... Hmm... I don't know. Hopefully Pug Scene is open, since friends aren't a thing. The new Alliance raid was actually named. Echoes of Vanadiel? Um... What? Huh? After Myths of the Realm was so proudly and uniquely Final Fantasy XIV... This? I'm kind of surprised. More people have probably played Nier Automata than they have played Eleven. Perhaps maybe... Just maybe, they will announce a paired-in sub of Final Fantasy XI. That's the only thing that will get me to play Final Fantasy XI, I expect. This crossover... Well, it could lead to that. I don't know, though. People seem excited for it, at least. I'm just surprised in a different way. I would have expected another Final Fantasy XIV-focused alliance raid first. But 20 years is 20 years. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind it. Just confused me. And, oh my god, a new limited job. They didn't give up on it. They really are doing it. A genuine, heartfelt, fuck you to everyone begging for Blue Mage to fail. You refuse to give it a chance. Refuse to admit that this is literally everything you asked for out of a Blue Mage. And we're getting another. And it's called Pictomancer. Let's be real, as much of a fun time Pictomancer might be for the mage job, the way the job plays is much more akin to Blue Mage, and would even leave room for making the sketch glitch part of the gameplay. It's even more fitting because the first limited job was Strago. The second is his granddaughter. The moment they announced the graphical changes being focused on Aw Ra, that's funny. You can really tell what priorities people have for this game. Scales being this huge cheering moment? Yeah, fashion fantasy is alive and well. They get really deep into the details of how graphics work though. I find it really neat that they got deep into the weeds talking about normal maps and all. But like, this is the 1.0 tech debt. This is how far the effects have come, still having to be worked around and fixed. And as we get further and further away from 1.0, the worse it gets. Small, subtle things like this, things you definitely could not tell the difference live at EU FanFest, end up mattering a lot. So that they're emphasizing a Lollafell cheek, it really emphasizes everything that they have to go through. A tiny detail is not so tiny in the grand scheme. The Xbox open beta is early in the new year. This is going to be huge and I'm super glad for it. Be nice to all the new Sprouts. Stop calling it Aetherus. Hey, it's Fall Guys! Epic fired the entire team behind it. Isn't that wonderful? No, no it isn't. And as fun as the event might be, that fact kind of sours the entire thing. Yoshida and even Square as a whole had no call on this, but man, that really sucks. The way they're doing it is a bit smart too, ensuring it stays active a bit. Sometimes it will be open, other times closed. When it reopens, more people will flood in than they would if it was always open. Cycles are very good. And there it is, the Final Fantasy 16 crossover, looking very, very much like the Final Fantasy 15 crossover. Pretty sure I saw a media do the Phoenix Wing parry and Toggle Toggle Toggle. Uh, ahem. But uh, yeah, I'm doing this ASAP because the 15 event was super fun. But they didn't say when exactly, unfortunately, unless I somehow completely missed it. They said sometime before Dawn Trail, but Cloud Data Center stress test towards the end of November. This seems pretty damn important for us to participate in if you have time. Even just a day of play, especially because characters get wiped. Give them plenty of valuable data. So if you want to see Final Fantasy XIV continue to grow, do please join in the test. A mono art truly cannot be replicated, and is apparently similar to FF3 art. Hmm, that wasn't a suspicious comment at all. 
Finally, they bring out the father of the series, Sakaguchi. And yeah, you can really tell his love for the series is endless. Two years already since he joined Final Fantasy XIV and continues to play. Gotta envy all the people he plays with. And that covers the keynote. There's lots more to talk about, like the dev panel and the tons of info that went into, the Gillionaire and the creators doing a good job there, but I think that's where I call it for what my role is. I skipped over stuff I had nothing to say for, but those are my thoughts otherwise. For a quick note of what we didn't see, the mage job was obviously going to be at Japan Fest. More raid and trial stuff, also at the final fest. Female Hrothgar has already been seen. Go to 6.5, she's in there. Well, at least her legs are. I was told in the first fan fest that there was an unknown female voice speaking at the end of the trailer. The Hrothgal who recruits us to commit regicide. Wouldn't be our first time. Or second. Or third. But yeah, that's our female Hrothgar. They're doing a Yugiri, and we will see her in 6.55. And maybe she'll even be wearing a hat! Wow! But yeah, that's it. Enjoy the shows, take care, and may the power of Anna Hog slay waste to your enemies.